The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. Hi, I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, and I am so delighted to introduce and welcome our guest today, Shannon Seifert, President and CEO of the Santa Maria YMCA. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you, Susan. I'm so delighted to be here. I'm so glad that you can share the afternoon with us and share your story with our audience today. We have a lot to share, a lot of great things that happen out of the YMCA and your leadership. Um, but before we go into all of that, let's start back at the beginning. Let's start uh, with your childhood and where you grew up and where you went to school. Okay. I grew up in Monterey County in King City. I'm a ranch kid. Mm -hmm. We're fifth generation California, Californians. And I'm one of six kids. So we grew up um, very, very busy. Mm -hmm. Our, uh, we, I have to say this. We had one pair of shoes each. And there's this picture from when I think I was like six. In the, in the Rustler, that's the King City newspaper. And uh, we're all barefoot in the library. The library was and still is one of my very favorite places to be. I don't care how much IT we have, books are books. And I've always had a passion for reading and literacy. So I'm gonna say um, that I grew up a farm kid, hard work ethic, and lots of reading because it's what kept us occupied for my mom. I love that. And now why were you in the paper? Because there were six kids in the library <laughs> reading, and it was like summer. You don't know what you do to your kid? Bring them here. And there's all of us lined up reading books. I it was love perfect, that. with my mom looking quite relieved in the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'd like to see that picture someday. And when you were growing up, what, were, what was on your mind to be a profession that you thought you would pursue, an aspiration? So growing up on a ranch, here's what happens. Um, we grew up there, and we worked. So the minute we could wield a shovel, we were cleaning out a barn. Mm -hmm or we ran cattle. And I know everybody thinks how romantic that is. You got to horseback ride every day. Well, the truth is it was work. You're up at 4.30 and you're running a bunch of cattle and then you're herding them in and then you're farming. So it, it, the farm life is, um, and ranch life is super busy and uh, it created an amazing teamwork and work ethic yes. between not just my siblings and I, but our cousins and our uncles because it was all a huge family unit mm -hmm. where we worked together to make that happen. So I'm gonna say that is the formative years that made me want to be a part of a team and a community that does more for everyone. And were you thinking that this is this this particular profession is something I'd like to be in or this particular profession? Absolutely not. not. I would love to tell you that I was laser focused. Yes. And I absolutely wasn't. I came to the Y um, when I was young um, and wanted to uh, work out and be fit and I was a stay at home mom and I couldn't afford a membership. Which leads me right into the next question. I'm so glad that you talked about that because you you talked about your growing up and the work ethic and all that teamwork and the hard work um, and the good work of you know growing up on a farm and and then now you you're let's you're you're the CEO and president of the YMCA in Santa Maria. How did that begin? How did that even start? So um, again, by accident. Mm -hmm. So I came in to work. I was a stay-at-home mom. My husband was in construction. Mm -hmm. And I thought, gosh, I really, really want to go to a place of fitness. And I was kind of lonely. As a stay-at-home mom, yes. I'd worked full-time, had my kids, or one, and I was um, didn't have my second one yet. So I come into the Y, and I said, wow, I really want to uh, work out here, but you know, really can't afford a membership. So at the time, we, we give scholarships out. I just need to say that very clearly to everyone, to the world. But nobody told me that at the time. So they said, well, you could trade. You could work bingo and you could trade for your membership. And I thought, great, I'll do that. So I did that for uh, about six months. And then I thought, I could work here. Mm -hmm. I could, I could make that better. I could do that. So I ended up slowly growing my way up through the Y, through the fitness department, and then through several other departments, including facilities, 
um, and learn the why from the ground up. Wow, that is fantastic. I love that story. I really do, because now as the president and CEO, you see the why from multiple perspectives, absolutely multiple Including scrubbing grout. Including <laughs> scrubbing grout and organizing bingo, right, from exactly. what I understand. Yeah. Isn't that hilarious? It's wonderful. It's I also really... have to make clear, we don't gamble at the why anymore. No, that was, a, that was a story from the past. Back yeah. in the day, 27 years ago, that's how we got by. <laughs> so let's talk about the why and its mission and, and how it serves the community. So this is your floor to talk about the YMCA. Yes, I love the Y. I'm going to say um, not just not just because um, we're nonprofit and we do what we do, mm -hmm. but because it's tangible. It's a bit selfish on my part to love it like I do, but the results we see are tangible. So we have a family who comes in. Um, I'll give you an example. We had our testimonial at our major gifts kickoff last uh, week, and he came in and he's a, a gentleman who had pancreatitis and he became paralyzed from it. And he couldn't, they told me, you'll never walk again, you'll never move again, you will be lucky to be able to feed yourself. And he went into rehab and he couldn't get enough out of it and he was embarrassed to walk in his walker. This guy's probably about 40. Wow. And he has two children and a wife. And he came in and came in with his walker and um, not only did we op uh, welcome him with open arms, but we also financial aided him so he could afford to come in rehab. And now... He works out three hours a day. He's fully functional. He can wow. walk. He has braces on his legs. But he still is an amazing testimonial to why the why is there so people can get their lives and recoup. That's, and that's just one example. That's one example. And you said tangible. And there's mm -hmm. probably a 1,000, 10,000 examples of that. I love that. And how many members do you currently serve at the YMCA? Well, we have 5,800 members. And then we have a soccer arena, which is, serves another 2,000. Mm -hmm. And then we have nine off-sites with ACEs which is after school care from Prop 49. We've had that for 11 to 12 years. Okay. And so um, I say I would say overall, including those off-sites, we serve about 9,000 people in our community. It's a lot of people. It's great. It's wonderful, yes. And we talked today just now about fitness. We've talked about the, the, the man who shared his story and now is working out, um, working out three hours a day, which is incredible. Um, but the YMCA does so much more than really in terms of fitness. There's, there's so much more in terms of literacy and support for students, and we're going to talk all about them. One of them is a program called Rise Up, and I'd really like to hear about that program from you, and, and what does it mean, and who does it serve, and how does it help? Oh, Susan. Yes. I love the signature program. Great. So, so Rise Up, we started two years ago, okay. and the reason is it was, a, it was a call out. I know you know in the city of Santa Maria, we have a huge gang challenge and the mayor's task force was trying to put together something for the youth mm -hmm. and the why is really well set up for very early prevention not so much intervention later but prevention okay. so we worked with Hancock College with a specific program based on metrics on when is the right age to prevent and believe it or not it's nine years old mm -hmm. which is so young it's third grade but we thought all right we're gonna trust these stats we put together a program with Paul Murphy who works for Hancock College mm -hmm. And we put together this huge program, we named it Rise Up, and it is 25 third graders that we want to bring them through a three-year program. So that's a tricky one because the recidivism is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And the program is STEM. It's uh, Y Readers, which is a literacy program. It's, um, we also have a program about um, healthy eating, mm -hmm. healthy behaviors initiative that Hannah Beth Jackson chose us in this district to Exciting. become certified. So we're there to help. Um, childhood obesity and diabetes is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Again, at these young ages. And swim lessons, the kids have to have fun. Yeah. They have to have fun. So we brought in uh, all these components in addition to Cal Poly and Fresno alums to teach the STEM components specifically. We also brought in a lot of women STEM graduates because, again, that's atypical. And we really wanted these kids to see that anyone can be a consummate professional. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you are from, what, what sex you are, who you are, you can do it. You mm -hmm. can do this. So we want to give these kids a different view and a different perspective. So we are now entering our third year of a three-year pilot program. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited. The efficacy of the first couple of years of metrics have proven out very well. Right. But we've learned a lot anytime mm -hmm. in a pilot program you do. So what we just found out, um, Kevin Walthers, 
the president, um, Dr. Walters, with Hancock mm -hmm. College, is partnering with us on this. And so these kids, these third graders, are going to graduate in the fall of this year from our program and be hand carried in by Kevin in his bulldog program for those fifth graders. Fantastic. And then carry them on to the Promise program, which I don't know if you guys heard, but it's funded and helped by Robo today, but also it's a huge program for everyone to have access to a junior college education for books and tuition to be paid for. And um, so we want to take these little third graders all the way up through college and see what happens. And next week we're, we're um, presenting to the Department of Defense along with Kevin for a very broad version of this Rise Up wow. so that we can put it out on steroids and take it out to Boys and Girls Club and to the city and to Hancock and have these pods of this specific third grade program throughout the city. Wow. So that we can have a much broader impact with these partners. Couldn't do it without the partners. So yeah. one cohort so far has gone through and then will another begin? Yes, okay. we're starting a whole new batch. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we have 50 children coming this summer and then we start a whole fresh new cohort next year. And my hope and goal is that we start a fresh new cohort not only at the Y, mm -hmm. but at at least one or two alternate locations. Um, provided, of course, capacity and funding, as we all know. But I know we can do it. Yes, I, I believe I you can, can do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you can do it. That's for so sure. So excited. That is really wonderful. And is Rise Up a program that's after school, um, weekends, uh, during school, all of the above? It's pretty intense. Okay. So the STEM program is, is very intense, the STEM components, but all of it. So it's a full month in the summer. Okay. And the trick is getting the families, they have to be involved. We have the parents involved, they must be involved. Mm -hmm. And so we have to set this, they have to set that month aside. And it's hard to do. Your kids are home for summer. You have more than just your child, perhaps, that's right. involved. You're a single parent. So we created, uh, we made sure we had transportation for them. Um, we work and go pick them up at any of their school sites. We have SMAT, and they come and pick them all up for us. It's great. It's working out wonderfully. That's really great. So, um, so yes, and then throughout the year, we keep in touch with these families. We bring them Christmas. Mm -hmm. We have a dinner for them where we do a STEM-related activity along with dinner, and always the families are there. It's actually mandatory that the families come. It I isn't see. a drop your kid off. It's a you're it involved. Must be. Mm -hmm. This is your child. Mm -hmm. And the parents, can I tell you a little story about just one Absolutely. Child? Okay. This was just, it, it got my heart. But one of our children came in and he's, you know, again, third grade. And he comes in and he was very shy, very reticent. I mean, initially we're really not trusted because these families don't know us. Mm -hmm. And why would you do this for us for free? Why are you doing this? So so it's a little suspect initially because, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they, they're, rightly so, they're nervous. Mm -hmm. But it's okay, we overcome that by education. So this little guy came in for the first two weeks, he didn't say much. And then in the third week, his mom came in to us and she said, I need to tell you that he always stayed home with me because my older son was abusive to me and he felt he had to protect mm -hmm. me. This is a nine-year-old kid. And she goes, and now he's confident to go and he knows I'm okay because we've taken some measures there. She goes, but he wouldn't leave me because of our, our home environment. And now he knows not only can he, but he can be something mm -hmm. later on in life. He, this isn't his job, his role. And for that mom to share that with us was pretty amazing. Very amazing. And we were touched and, and mm -hmm. that she would share it. And now he's just, he's like Johnny on the spot. I love it. He came and spoke last year at our campaign. Nine is years old, right? he came and spoke. Wow. And that's pretty impressive in front of 100 volunteers. That is impressive, yeah. for sure. Well, the program cool. is very impressive, for sure. Well, we're excited about well, it. Well, we talked about Rise Up, and we uh, talked about YMCA and signature programs. What other signature programs would you would you say exist with the YMCA? So one of my favorites, of course, is our Santa Barbara County um, Education <laughs> Volunteerism Outreach. Yes. It's, it's a great partnership. Um, ben Romo, back in the day before he was with First Five, when uh -huh. he was at the county, now we have Chelsea Duffy, who's yes. delightful. Um, came to us and said, wow, we really need a North County volunteer uh, spot because you guys need services. All these schools need services. And we really don't have anything except in South County. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, let's be that bridge, man. It's what we're made to do. Mm -hmm. And so we did. We became it. We started out at our place with an AmeriCorps. And she was lovely, Erica Reyes. And now she's into politics in San Luis County. Yes. She's lovely. Yes, she is lovely. And so she was our first. Mm -hmm. And she was great. It was such a great first experience for all of us. So she stayed with us a year. And we got our feet in dress. And so now that program, I think we have about 800 volunteers mm -hmm. out in all the school districts. Um, especially, uh, we like to serve um, the high needs schools. Mm -hmm. So Guadalupe Arianas, um, all the Santa Maria and Benita school district were there. And it's really a neat venue. But another part of that is we've incorporated these students into volunteerism. Mm -hmm. And that turned into an internship program at the Y, which I love because we get lots of calls from families going, 
my kid is just on his cell phone. He can't even make eye contact. Right. He's sitting there on his cell phone and he can't, it's not working out. He can't interact and it's just, mm -hmm. you know, his technology gone awry a little bit. So we take him in. They can't have their cell phones. We interview them. They have to clock in, clock out. We track their hours. We teach them a job. Or we link them with a place that, like an engineering job, mm -hmm. and a, a person will take them on. Or we hire them, and they're paid a stipend. And it's lovely, and it's growing. So I really like that. It's only for young kids, so it's 15 to 17. You know, it's not into adults, but it's to get them ready for the job market. Fantastic. So yeah. we rise up. We've got this uh, North County Volunteer partnership with the internship component. And I think you do a lot of work around childhood obesity. We do. Um, which you talked about a little bit before. Can you say a little bit more about yes. what it is that you do? Yes, yes. the Healthy Behaviors Initiative. So we Perfect. became a certified trainer. It took us a year. Mm -hmm. It's a huge certification process. And the goal is, um, in our district specifically, there is a high rate of uh, childhood obesity and diabetes. Mm -hmm. So again, back to prevention, which the, the why is great at. So if we can get to these little kids and their families, again, the family is huge, so we have to bring them all in to be part of the education process. So we started it out at Ariana's where we planted a huge garden. The kids mm -hmm. tended it themselves, cooked, we brought in the food, we brought in a kitchen, taught them all how to make food, and uh, we do it in our summer program every single year. And the, uh, the idea is, to, is education, mm -hmm. basically, but hands-on education. Bonnie Pack is a huge partner and provides fresh local vegetables wow. all year long for us. And, um, that's also helpful because then you're cooking with what you have accessible to you. Mm -hmm. And these families will learn that too and do. They that's do. great. They come to us. The kids go home and cook for them. Oh, that's wonderful. What I'm learning from, from you and all of these examples are not only about the examples, but the impact that you have in so many of our schools and so many of our families. So it's not just the, not just, but it's not only the members that actually come into your YMCA building. But boy, does the YMCA go out into the community and serve so many families and children. It's really, really uh, impactful, like I said. So one thing that you talked about um, is, is partnerships. And there are so many partnerships that really the Y uh, has uh, in has served and, and been a part of. I know in talking with you and knowing about some of your background, you really believe in that power of partnership. It's something that's just a core value for you. So I wanted to ask you about that. What is, what is your belief in the power of partnerships and what are some of the ones that are really, really um, powerful for the YMCA? Oh, I love that question so much. Um, because without a doubt, the Y could not thrive without the partnerships mm -hmm. we have. And these partnerships came from reaching out, really, I will tell you, talking to Karen Macy, the president of Dignity Health, mm -hmm. or Kevin Walters with Hancock, or um, Luke Ontiveros with the school district. There is not one person that I have ever reached out to that hasn't that has said no. Hi, can you meet? Can we talk about this issue or this issue? And they, it, the beauty of this community is nobody's too important or too busy to make it better for everyone. I can't, I hear this over and over in this community that this is, I don't know if it's atypical, but it's lovely. You've probably noticed it yourself, oh, in yes. the, especially in the education mm -hmm. field. But we're not limited, we're the why, and, and we're here to serve, and the other beautiful thing is, people will come to us and say, can you provide, for instance, Blockman School needs some after school care, and a bus in, and a drop off point, can you provide that? Absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, and their superintendent, Doug, Plays racquetball at the Y every day. Is that right? <laughs> Luke That's plays right. basketball there three times that. a day. I mean, That's three great. times a week. I'm like, what? So I like that it's a hub, not yes. just professionally, but personally. A place to meet and greet and be well and play together, not just work. Mm -hmm. It's about those relationships uh, meshing and melding. So those are a couple of our really good partners. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to pivot a little bit away okay. from the uh, YMCA for a moment and talk about you you as a leader and your the the philanthropy and the volunteerism that you've uh, participated in. And one of those areas is with CALM, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit about CALM, what, what role you play? Tell us, tell the audience what CALM does and what it's about. So years ago, again, this is back, gosh, I'm really dating myself, but that's all right. I love being around <laughs> for this long. It's so great. So back when CALM first tried to do, again, North County Outreach, mm -hmm. I, I guess the Y is turning into a bit of a bridge. Mm -hmm. As I'm talking to you, I didn't recognize it as such. Mm -hmm. But... Um, 
back then, Cecilia, I don't know if you know her, but she was, in, she was the CEO at Calm, and now Alana is. And um, she said, wow, we really need, I mean, North County has the highest need, mm -hmm. but we don't have anything in North County. So way back before they even had offices here, they came and said, how do we do it? So Peggy Blau and Mike Gibson and, um, and myself, because it's the Y, you know, mm -hmm. it's a community hub. Um, she said, what, what can we do there? And we're like, well, bring it. Let's just, let's just figure out a place. So, so Cecilia was so instrumental in finding a place. And we, I love Calm personally and professionally because they're filling a niche which educates, again, back to the whole family. We're not just treating a symptom of a child who's been abused. We're teaching the parents on how to mediate with their child and how to communicate with their child. I'll never forget the first time I went to Calm. They had a microphone and a mom in there working with her child because she did not know how to discipline her child without physical violence. Right. And they sat there with a the microphone and the child was pushing back like kids do. And they were telling her in her ear, here's an option, use this, use these words. And you could see her going, oh my gosh, this is working. And I thought, again, back to the tangible practicality and beauty of educating the parents on how to be better at what they do mm -hmm. rather than removing a child or a child going through the system and then becoming the same thing that, that their parent was because they didn't have the knowledge or the education right. on how to lift themselves up. Right. So I love CALM. CALM. Child Abuse Listening and Mediation. mediation. Yeah, what a wonderful organization. It and really so is. Glad that you were able to participate in that way. And now yeah. it's thriving here in, in northern and Santa Barbara Definitely County. not because of me. Yeah, <laughs> it's because of a lot of, but we're still partners with them mm -hmm. and they help us in our preschool often if we have a situation. And we do trainings. Mm -hmm. They help with trainings throughout, which is wonderful. Well, and you've been a leader for now, you know, several years now, and I'm sure that you coach and mentor up and comers. Um, yes, yes, and you get a chance to, even if they, even if you don't know you're mentoring them, they, you probably are. Do you have a particular approach in which you like to um, mentor an up and coming leader or some philo philosophical points that you like to impart? I know. I love that you give me a lot of credit about being such a thought leader. So I think here's, you the, are. here's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it started out of learning. You know how we go on our learning curve, and I learned by watching what people do really well, going, I want to be that. And then what people do really badly, I'm like, I will never do that. Yes. And I know that's a learning process for most people. Mm -hmm. The number one thing I knew when I came to the Y as CEO, um, it was a huge challenge. The Y, um, I, I've been there 10 years now as CEO and 23 just as a, as a Y employee growing up in there. Yeah. But um, when I came into the role, uh, we were upside down financially. It was a big challenge. Um, my board was a bit disarray. My staff were lovely, loyal, and completely untrained. Mm -hmm. And so I had to restructure. I was the least popular person on the planet for a full year. Very lonely, very awful, and very um, necessary. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so my leadership started out uh, the most uncomfortable leadership you could imagine. Mm -hmm. It was um, walking in going, I have to fix this and, and I have to fix that by cutting all of this out. And that's never comfortable. Right. It was awful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but once that was all done, um, what, I, what I decided was I want these, these staff that we have here and the staff that we bring in to be fully educated and fully trained and have all their access to anything they could want. So, so not just so they're good for this why, but so they're good anywhere they go. Mm -hmm. So I changed my thought process into your mind, mine, all mine to how can I make you into the most professional person where you can take this skill set anywhere you want to be. Mm -hmm. And so I've trained them all to replace me. They all, my core staff, my lead staff, I have nine, are all taking trainings in various levels so that they have all the why, we have a two-year program that sets you up to be a CEO in addition to your four-year degree. Um, and I want every one of them to have that. So if they leave me, they can go be CEO anywhere or take my place. Wow. Either one's great, but that's my goal is not that, it's not just all about the why, it's about raising people to a professional level no matter where they go. That's incredible. It's and, and you talked about the program, this two-year program, leadership program, is that from the YMCA? Mm -hmm. It's Y National, it's all requirements in order to be a CEO. Mm. But there's also leadership, you know, Santa Maria leadership groups, and there's leadership lead from leading from within yes. that Santa Barbara County just brought to Santa Maria. So I've had Andrea Gallardo in it and Chris Delia in that so far. That's great. And they're very, very uh, taxing, mm -hmm. and they're not just a, oh, come here and we'll teach you. They're like, you, you're vetted. And you have to be serious about your career, and you have to be in your career a while before you even qualify to take these classes. You know, the, the you shared about how your leadership style is in terms of mentoring those who are working with you. 
How do you think uh, you learned how to be a better leader? Because you started out in multiple different jobs at mm -hmm. the YMCA. You've really grown up and into it. Right. How did you learn it for yourself? So I would say that when I first came to, well, I'm going to say growing up. i got to go back to childhood. I hope you don't mind a little no, regression. No, not at all. So growing up, I know in our farm, back to that, um, my mom would take us, um, all six of us kids, we had this the ranchers, and we would harvest each other's farms. And mm -hmm. she would pack us all up. This is before microwaves, let me tell you. She would make <laughs> this sit-down, full-on lunch for this crew of 12 and her six kids, big pot of beans, bunch of cherry pies, steaks, potatoes, load them all into this old station wagon. We'd all be standing up in the back seat. Back then, you didn't need seat belts, and there wasn't room anyway. And we, she'd take <laughs> us out to the, to the farming, for where they were farming that day, and feed them all. And she would do that all day, every day. And then when we were done with our ranch, we would go to the neighbor's ranch, and we'd farm that. And then when we were done with that, we'd go to the next neighbor's ranch, and everybody stepped up. I'm going to say, A, my mom, watching her quietly just do her work. I never even knew she was uh, the leader she was, because she was not ta-da. Mm -hmm. She was just, you just put your head down in color. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favorite sayings. Just put your head down in color and ask a lot of questions. I rarely pretend that I know something I don't. Every now and then my ego gets in the way. But most of the time I ask. Mm -hmm. If I need help or I want something or I, I need to learn something or I need to impart something, I just ask because there's always people who know more than I do. Shannon, you have so much wisdom to share. I love the looping back around to your, to your family and how you grew up. I think that that farm life really... Um, taught something that is so valuable, you know, in you. So too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, not only are you so wise about your wisdom, but you're also mentoring up and comers that I think is they're so fortunate to have you as as a leader. We're ending our show. I can't believe it. The program is already coming to a close. Half an hour just snaps by, truly. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to to talk to say something to the community, a message to the community that you might want to leave the show with today. Okay, I would love that. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll try not to make it too sales pitchy, but <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Two things. I have to say that we've built our board to fit gaps that have made this possible to reach out to the community. Couldn't do it without this board we've built. Mm -hmm. It took us 10 years to build a board as strong as we have. And when wow. we have a strong board, we're able to to really make an impact in the community. In addition to that, the staff being trained is huge. Mm -hmm. But the thing I didn't know when I came to the Y that I really want the entire community to know is we're here for you. Mm -hmm. The Y is at the behest of this community. The fact that I didn't know about financial aid and the availability and the need for a swim lesson or childcare or to get well, get back on your feet, or for whatever you might need that the Y can provide we raise funds privately every single year, and all of that money goes back out Wonderful. to this community. Not to operations, not to decorating, not to payroll. Mm -hmm. It goes to you. I want people to know that. Please know that. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, this is our purpose and That's our mission. What, what a wonderful way to conclude our interview with that um, message out to the community and a welcome and open arms to the YMCA for anybody who needs anything. They can go right there and find a way to enter in and get some support yep. in multiple different ways. So, yep. Shannon, thank you so much for being our guest today and for imparting the wisdom and for not only being my guest, but for um, impacting the community in such great ways that you do, just not only at the YMCA, but really out in our schools, in our families. You really touch the lives of so many and make a huge difference, so thank you. I love it, thank you. I'm Susan Salcedo, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Education Matters.